Hi everyone, welcome back to the Syntax Byte. My name is Ryan, and in this video, we're going to be talking about getting directions with the Open Route Service and Python using the Open Route Service Py wrapper. So, in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set up your own instance of the Open Route Service API using, doc, uh, using Docker. That video got a lot of interest, and there was definitely some interest from folks who were wondering how to go ahead and use that API. Uh, in Python. So I thought I would do, this is the first of a few videos showing off some of the API features uh, and how you can use them with the Open Route Service Pi wrapper. So to get started, of course, you want to have uh, the Open Route Service Pi package installed. Um, all you have to do is basically just install it using pip. Um, once you're done that, uh, it'll be installed and ready to go. Just make sure of course, that if you're using a virtual environment or anything like that, that you know your notebook is set to the right environment and stuff like that. Um, but if you just want to install it globally, you can just do a pip install, open route service, and then you should be good to go. So I've got a blank notebook here. First thing I'm going to get, go ahead and do is import open route service as ORS. Um, you could just import it, but this little abbreviation makes it cleaner. That's what they use in the official docs, so it's easiest to do that to not get confused. I'm also going to import Folium. Folium is a uh, mapping library, um, which is very helpful uh, to visualize the routes that we're getting back from Open Route Service. So by no means do you need to use Folium, uh, but it is helpful sometimes to visualize the route, um, even if it's just for debugging purposes. So you can make sure that what you're getting back is is actually making sense. So I'm gonna hit Control Enter on my imports, and we're good to go. So the next thing I need to do is set up my Open Route Service client. Um, there's basically two ways to do this. So in this video, I'm actually gonna use the Open Route Service uh, API, just their hosted version. Uh, but you can also self-host, and if you're doing that, like I showed you in my previous video then it just changes what you feed to the client um, when you create it um, in your notebook. So if you're using the regular API like me, you can say client equals ors.client and you're just gonna pass your API key. Of course, I will disable this API key after this video. And so there we go. If, however, you wanted to use a self-hosted instance, what you would do is not pass an API key. You would say client equals ORS uh, dot client, and then you would do base underscore URL equals, and then localhost dot dot dot, you know, wh whatever it is, like if you have localhost 8080 ORS or whatever it is. Um, so if you, if you followed my previous video, that's what you want to do to make sure that Open Route Service uh, is using your self-hosted version. However, if you want to just use the open route service that's available live and has quotas and stuff like that, um, then you pass your API key here. Uh, so either is fine. I'm going to go ahead and run that. We're good to go. Okay, so at this point, we're going to get directions from the White House to the Pentagon. Uh, that's going to be our example for today. Um, and then we're going to throw that on a map and I'll explain um, basically the different things that open route service is going to give us when we go ahead and request um, that route but to get started let's understand what the open route service is going to give us back so i have here an example this is just the example straight off their website for getting directions and it shows us what we get back so we have a feature collection um, the bounding box i believe is the total area that the route contains Then you'll see we have route segments and steps. So for this one, I believe there's only one segment of the route, which makes sense. Um, it gives you a distance, a duration, and then you have each of your steps. And you'll note that the steps have waypoints here, okay? So each step has a waypoint, it has a direction, or a, sorry, an instruction with it, a distance, duration, and a name of the street that you're gonna be going on. And then down here, we have geometry and coordinates. And this gives, you know, basically all of the, the steps along the line. And it creates here a line string. So this, this particular thing is in a format called GeoJSON. 
Um, you can get it to give you other formats. We're going to focus on this format today. So you'll note that every single step has waypoints, but that they don't necessarily go. So here we go from 0 to 1, but then we go to 1 to 11 and 11 to 39. So you'll notice that there's lots of points in between where there is no waypoint. Um, and basically that's just because there isn't an instruction or particular action associated with that. You might be going down a windy road um, and it might you know, encode all those as different coordinates as you wind the road, but at the same time you're you know, staying on a singular road. And so the result is that if you want to get a smooth routing, you kind of need to use all of the coordinates. If you want to just understand where the car is going to make a turn, then you use the uh, only the coordinates that are listed as waypoints. So with that being said, and us having a general understanding of what kind of routing we're going to get back, uh, we can go ahead and do some visualizations and make a request. So to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my folium map. Now one thing to understand is very important when you're working with folium is that folium does things in, I believe it's latitude longitude, whereas um, open route service for whatever reason does stuff in longitude latitude. So you have to reverse coordinates um, to get them to appear correctly on folium because open route service uses the opposite direction. And if you go and look stuff up on Google Maps or even OpenStreetMap, uh, you're going to get them in a lat long format. And then so you got to remember to reverse that to give them to to give them to um, open route service. Otherwise, it won't go where you think it's going to go. You'll probably be in the middle of the ocean. But so to get started, I'm going to do map. We're going to do location equals list of reversed. So these are my uh, coordinates in open route service um, style. So longitude, latitude, because I'm reversing them. So I could just manually do this process um, or I could do it with the computer here, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna have it start at these coordinates here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it as I've pre-selected some coordinates for us to work with. So this is somewhere in the, in the DC area. And then we can close off that function. We need tiles, it's gonna be equal to cart ODB positron. Uh, this will set the style of the map. So if you omit this, it uses the default OpenStreetMap style, which in my opinion is quite ugly and very difficult to look at. Um, this will make it a little bit more attractive. And then we can set our zoom start, which is how far we want the map to be zoomed in when we start. And uh, we can actually, so of course at Jupiter, the last thing will always be returned. So if we just return M, we can see this is the map. And so we get the map. And you can see if I remove this, I'll just see how ugly that is. Yeah, we get this ugly, uh, ugly map style. So that's why um, that's there. So our map is good. Uh, we see the DC area, everything looks good. Very happy with that. So now we need uh, some directions to put on our map. So my coordinates here, I'm just going to copy and paste this. Like I said, um, I already prepared this for the video. This is the White House to the Pentagon. So White House, Pentagon, and like I said, we're in la longitude latitude format here, uh, which is the opposite of most map software uh, for some reason. So that's the, that's the format we need to give to open route service. So we can go ahead and do route is equal to client dot directions. And we pass it our coordinates, those chords. Then we need to pass it a profile. A profile is basically saying, how do you want me to go um, to this particular place? So the choices are driving car, driving HGV, foot walking, foot hiking, cycling, cycling regular road and mountain, and electric. Um, so essentially we can do walking, we can do driving, and we can do cycling. It does not unfortunately provide um, an option for doing public transit coordinates. So if you are looking to get uh, route directions using public transit, uh, there may be a different API that's more appropriate for you. This one unfortunately doesn't really provide that. So I'm gonna start with the good old classic driving car um, and then we'll go from there. 
try out a couple different ones and see how the route changes once we have it visualized. Um, and then the next thing that we need to do is pass the format. Now, as I mentioned before, this format uh, down here is GeoJSON. There's nowhere that I can see in this URL where we've passed a format. Um, so that's what Open Route Service is kind of using as the default. But I guess it's not what the Open Route Service Pi wrapper thinks is the default. So you do want to go ahead and do format uh, GeoJSON. Otherwise, you will get your coordinates. Um, this part of the the um, response here will be in these like weird letters and numbers that is called Google's encoded polyline. So I don't know how to work with the encoded polyline. Uh, none of the examples for the API were using the encoded polyline. So I'm not sure why it's the default, but just pass format GeoJSON and everything is all good again. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna add the smooth line onto the map. Um, we could of course print the route here and see the response, but like I said, it looks, looks very, very similar to this. Um, so we can treat it as such. Uh, obviously it's a, it's a Pythonified version that's been converted to, to a Python, uh, but I believe it's a dictionary. Um, but that and JSON are very comparable data types, so we can go ahead and work with it. So I'm gonna do a folium polyline, and we can do locations is gonna be equal to a list reversed chord and remember we're doing this because folium so we've gotten coordinates back now these are an open route service format so yeah those are an open route service format we need to convert them back to folia folium format so we're doing a list of reversed chord for chord in route features so we're coming down we got our route we're gonna do features. We are gonna take the first feature, okay, because this is technically an array. Take the first feature, and then we are going to um, do geometry. Okay, and that's that's bringing us down here, so not properties, we're doing geog geometry, and then we'll do coordinates, and then we'll uh, go through them all. So that's going to end up being our chord because we're doing a loop. So geometry, coordinates, and then that is uh, our list there. I'm going to do a color. We'll just say it's color blue um, so we can differentiate it from the other line we're going to add. And then we do add to M. And so this gives us our line. Uh, so we can go ahead and see, and like I said, it, it is a smooth line. So as we go around the bend here, you'll see it follows the road pretty much exactly. Um, it's been given enough coordinates to make a smooth line uh, that follows the road uh, exactly as we see it on the map. And so that's real good. And it's taking us from the White House to the Pentagon, and it's using the roads. It's going in a car. Perfect. So perhaps you're wondering, you know, okay, this is great, but like, what if we just draw out all the steps? Uh, so to see the two di the differences between that route. So in order to draw out all the steps, it takes a little bit more work and, and maneuvering, but uh, it's pretty easy to add that in as a second polyline. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, do a polyline, and I'm actually going to break things out into into a list of coordinates. Um, already. So what I want to do is I want to distill this list here. So we have properties, we have steps, and then we have waypoints. I want to distill it into a list of waypoints, and those are the indexes of all the coordinates that I'm interested in. So in order to do that, it just takes a little bit of, bit of maneuvering. So I'm going to say waypoints is equal to, we're going to do, so we'll start from the very, from the, from the from the very front. So we're going to do map and we're going to say uh, lambda is a step and then we're going to say step waypoints. So we're going to look for the waypoints. Uh, so we want to get uh, this little array here, okay? Um, out of each of the steps. So we're going to loop through the steps and, and return the waypoints array. So now we need to, of course, pass the array that we're sort of looping here. 
So we'll do route features uh, zero first feature. Uh, then there's properties. Okay, so we're doing route uh, feature zero properties. Then we gotta do segments. You can in theory have multiple segments. I'm got to be totally honest. I'm not too sure what what would cause the API to return multiple segments. But we can go ahead and just pick the first one, and then we're gonna do uh, the steps. Okay, and so that's that's the first thing. Um, and if we go ahead and just look, so we'll just oh, we'll just replace M there for a sec. We'll just go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and look at waypoints. See what we got. Uh, waypoints is a map. So if we convert this to a list, you can see that we get a, a list of the waypoints. So our goal now is to flatten this and then remove duplicates. Um, so in order to flatten it, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we'll do a couple imports. So we're going to import operator and then from func tools import reduce. And so now we can go ahead and flatten the list by doing uh, reduce and then we'll do operator dot concat and that list. So it's going to go through all of them, reduce them into one array by concatening them. And if we see that, we see that we've got now a single array with all the chords. We just have a bunch of duplicates now. So now we need to remove the duplicates. And so we can do a list of dict from keys. And this will remove duplicates in Python. I'm not going to claim that I came up with this code. It was definitely a Stack Overflow thing. Uh, but that uh, gets us the list we want of the waypoints. So like I said, it's a little bit of just messing around uh, to actually get that list, a little algorithm there. Um, but now that we have our waypoints, we can go ahead and add our line in. So we'll do folium polyline. And locations is going to be equal to a list of reversed. And then, so we want to take the appropriate coordinates for each of these like indexes, right? Like these are indexes in the coordinates array. And so we're actually just going to pull straight from this coordinates array. We can just copy this. Let's go like that. And then take the index. Okay. Do like that. And that's for index in waypoints. Okay, and that completes that. I'm going to go ahead and do a color is going to be equal to red, so we know we can tell the difference between the two lines. Of course, it's fairly obvious which line is which, but colors help us identify it. And we'll add it to the map, and then we'll return the map. And so what we see is that you can see all of the things that don't actually require the car to do something different are removed. So you can see we've got one line here between like when we exit the freeway and when we enter this this street, um, which is kind of interesting. So sometimes it follows quite closely. If there's a lot going on, it just looks a little blockier. Um, however, uh, sometimes it is quite different. And so it goes ahead and uh, veers off course quite a bit because we don't have all those extra coordinates to sort of correct it. But that is the basic, you know, route. Um, how it goes. Now we can just have a look here quickly and see if we change it to foot walking. What happens? And so you can see now it's got us going through the park actually. Um, and you can see, yeah, there's a lot of coordinates here that have us going around the circle. And of course, it's not going around the circle for the red line. Um, but it's got us taking a bit of a different route here if we were going to walk from the White House to the Pentagon. So that's everything I had to show today. I hope it was a helpful video and helps you get acquainted with how to get directions um, using Open Route Service Pi uh, and how to work with those directions and maybe do some visualizations. Um, this was definitely inspired uh, by the documentation uh, that they have on uh, their website. So definitely feel free to check that out as well. I will leave a link in the description below. And I hope you look forward to future videos on uh, route optimization and other features of the Open Route Service API. 
Thank you very much for watching. Drop a like on the video if it was helpful, and I will see you in the next one.